Thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or following me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. Okay, so welcome back to another Soothing Sunday October edition. Today we are doing something a little extra fun than the standard Soothing Sunday. We are taking part in Plant-tober. What is Plant-tober? So another plant-tuber named Dea started Plant-tober to kind of basically just bring all the fall vibes to plant channels across YouTube and I'm very excited to take part in it and I absolutely recommend checking out Dea's channel if you haven't already. She posts the most soothing videos ever. I love the energy coming from her videos and I absolutely recommend you checking her out if you are watching a soothing Sunday and want to be soothed. And I am a Scorpio and an October baby and although I am ride or die for spring and summer, I do have a little bit of a soft spot for Halloween and some fall. So here we are. Basically for today's soothing Sunday, we're just going to take things easy. I'm going to decorate for Halloween slash fall in the Plantober spirit and I'm going to end things with a Q&A. I have an absolutely massive snake plant that I have never brought out on this channel that needs a little attention so I'm going to be doing that while answering your questions. Okay but to get in the Halloween spirit, ooh spooky season, I'm going to show you guys the little fun things that I have to sprinkle around my room to just make things a little festive. Let me show you what I got. First we got the two pots of course. Hold on. This I've already kind of showed on the channel. I was very eager to bring this out. It is my little skull pot. I forgot where I got this from but obviously I love it and I have a begonia in here. I don't know I think it's kind of funky. I like it. So that is decor number one. The other plant slash pot that I have is what I mentioned in my recent greenhouse tour. So it is the pumpkin pot. Look how cute. I think I got this from Trader Joe's a while ago. Um, and I have, I bought this Prince of Orange just for this pot. And unfortunately, it's not the perfect fit that I had envisioned, but I think it works pretty well. And I really like the colors. So I also have this to put somewhere. Then I got two white pumpkins because these are cute and fall vibes and also like aesthetic. So I got these from Trader Joe's for really cheap. I'll probably end up getting more just because I really like them. <laughs> but I just have two to kick things off. Then I have purple lights. So ooh, and it's on like a wire. They're really cheap, but I can probably stick this around somewhere. I don't know. Then I have little ghost lights that I have to untangle. They're really cute. I really like how adorable they are. Isn't that cute? Am I just making things up? Last but not least, stolen from my mother. I have like a little witchy towel. That's what we're working with. I'm probably going to accumulate more as time goes on because I kind of want my videos that come out this month to have a little bit of a fall feel and I will have a spooky week on the week of Halloween. So get excited, get excited. I'm going to go ahead and plop them around my room to some super cool music that I have to find and then we will jump into the Q&A.
side note, also extremely spooky and therefore fall vibes is this nasty leak that I had and I had to clear out this entire corner so that they can come and fix it. And what, look at that water. That looks like fertilizer water. And the wall's a mess and all of my plants are like over here in the other room. So I will not be showing that because I have an image to upkeep, obviously but also spooky vibes. Okay, so we're done decorating and sprinkling fall around my room. You can see the little ghost lights here. And now let's answer some questions. These are questions that you guys sent me on Instagram or on YouTube. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. First of all, I'm really happy with how the fall decor came out. I feel like fall and definitely winter are not seasons I'm particularly happy about. So I really like just making my environment a little bit cozier to kind of push me through those harder months. So I'm really happy about that. I'm feeling good. Also, while I'm answering your questions, what I'm gonna be doing is actually like fixing up this massive snake plant I have been hiding from you guys. This is in Jonah's room and it's technically Jonah's plant, but I take care of it. So who's, you know, whose plant is it really? Basically, it's growing, hold on, I'll show you. It's growing like out a lot, like this, and he wants it more like this. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing today. Ah! That's what we have going on here. Let me pull up the questions and we can jump right into it. Oh, but first, in day of fashion, I have all of my cozy essentials near me. I have my incense burning. I have my Honeycrisp apple candle over here. And of course I have my favorite kombucha, which is GT's lavender kombucha. I got a little cozy fall vibes cause it's plantober after all. And let's just kick things off. So Steph, my sister, thank you Steph for participating asks what was my first plant and why did I start getting into plants? I think a lot of people ask me about why I got into plants. So I'm gonna answer that one first. That seems to be a hot topic. I touched on this in a previous Soothing Sunday, I think, but basically I just, I grew up in like the suburbs of New York. I know, suburban girl. I grew up in the suburbs of New York and it was like really like nature-y and green. And then when I moved to, and I, I kind of like always used to have like a house plant here and there. And then when I went off to college there, further into the woods, I started, you know, my little, a mini succulent collection. And then once I moved to Philly, I transferred schools, landed in Philly. And I kind of just like fell in love with the whole process of plants, like everything about it. I love the look, I love caring for them, I love learning about them. I'm just very, I feel like we're very lucky to share the earth with plants. And I truly enjoy the fact that I can grow them in my home. It's such a privilege and it's so much fun. In short, I guess, why did I, why am I into plants? Because I grew up around them and then as I got older, I kind of realized how actually incredible they are. And now I just want them everywhere all the time. <laughs> Nobody in my family really has a green thumb, so I have no idea where this came from, but it's here and I'm very happy. <laughs> okay, and then my first plant is actually, I think it was, I think my first plant ever was either a pothos or a cactus. And the oldest plant that I have in my little plant family is one of those original cacti. And I have that downstairs. Next question. Do I need to have grow lights for my plants during the winter? And I kind of have talked about this in my like preparing for winter video, but basically, I kind of recommend it. You don't have to. I think that a lot of people can get away with not having it, but it kind of just depends on your environment. You know, like, do you have windows? Do you have like shelving by your windows? Because if you have to put them on the windowsill, they might get cold. 
So you're gonna have to pull them back, but if you don't have a place to pull them back, then you're gonna need grow lights too, you know? For peace of mind and to like, absolutely like ensure that your plants are gonna get enough light during the winter time, I do recommend grow lights, depending on how many plants you have and where you live and all that jazz, like you don't need it. I just kind of recommend it, but you can definitely survive a winter without grow lights. Okay, Maddie, which, oh my God, ew. I see webbing. I'm gonna spray this when I'm done. Anyway, so Maddie, who I'm gonna post her little question and she does the most amazing sketches ever. I think she is such a talented artist and friend. So check her out. But she asks, is there a plant that maybe you disliked at first and then it has grown on you? Love the pun. Huh disliked at first. I didn't think about like these questions ahead of time. I think begonias. Maybe that's just like Dea's energy coming through right now because she loves begonias. But I feel like I got my first Rex begonia and it was beautiful at first and it didn't give me a hard time for like a while, but then it started giving me a hard time because those are definitely the harder begonias to take care of. The king begonias are a lot easier. So I kind of like wrote off begonias because for some reason the Rex begonia even killed king begonias for me. But then I recently got a cane begonia and I'm really like feeling them again and my rex begonia is doing better so i really think that i'm coming around to appreciating how gorgeous begonia foliage is and you know i'm just gonna start exploring that a little bit more and maybe trying to take care of some more begonias i think that over time like they really did grow on me if meek were a plant what plant would he be oh my god i love this question oh god what plant would he be <laughs> I think I would give Meek Fitonia because if you don't give that boy attention, he will wilt. He will wilt. He loves attention more than anything on this earth. He constantly needs to be hugged and loved. Hands down, Fitonia. And I do love Fitonias. I'm willing to put in the work for Fitonia. Next question. What was the first plant you bought that started it all? I kind of answered that. Pothos slash cacti. How do you keep the leaves on your Albo Syngonium from getting little dots on the foliage? Good question. Um, I feel like I know what spots you're talking about. If you have a Albo Syngonium, you might notice on the white parts of the leaves, there's like these little red flecks that show up. And I'm gonna be totally honest, I'm not sure what they are. I didn't do prior prep for this Q&A, otherwise maybe I would have researched it. But if I had to go from the top of my head, I would say maybe that's light related. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really confident in that, but my best guess is like a light thing. Next question. What's your favorite book or movie? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know about favorite, like I'm really bad at doing favorites, but I'm currently reading my garden book. It's the first book I've read that is about gardening. I've really just appreciated having a different and deeper perspective on gardening. I absolutely recommend it. Another book that is not plant related that I'm actually gonna definitely recommend, it was the best American food writing 2019 that was curated by Samin. That is an incredible book of writing just from an array of really accomplished and incredible chefs and writers. And I absolutely have to recommend that book. If you don't know, I'm like really, really into food. And I had the privilege of seeing Samin live and it was really great. She talked a little bit about this book and I found it really insightful and an important read for anyone that really enjoys food and eating out and wants to have a better understanding of some of the struggles that go on in that industry. How did you start your plant life journey? Who encouraged you and why? So I already answered the first part of this question, but I am going to answer the second half because I really liked the second half. I am really fortunate that like everybody pretty much cheers me on for this plant journey, whether it's just, you know, 
taking care of this many plants or starting a plant YouTube channel. Everybody's been really supportive in my life. I have like a pretty like tight circle of people and each and every one of them has been so amazing in rooting for me. Nobody really kind of sat me down and like you know, introduced me to plants and kind of um, cultivated a passion of plants for me. But I do really want to acknowledge and appreciate how much love I've gotten throughout my plant journey. And even Jonah recently, when I had the spider mite breakout, he literally stayed up with me past midnight, just inspecting plants, looking for spider mites. That's a good plant boyfriend. <laughs> um, also, I think that this is pretty much done. So brief pause, take a look. So yeah, I think that looks a lot better. This guy is like a little funky. Maybe I can tuck him behind. Boom. Once I water, I think this will look better too. Okay. What do your roommates think about your plant collection? So honestly, also very supportive. Most of the plants are in my room. So, you know, they don't really like bother anyone, but the few plants that I have like around the house, they're always like, that looks good. You can do more of that if you want. Is there a type of plant you would never ever buy? I've killed two ferns already. So I guess like I have bought them, but I feel like I wouldn't want to write off any plant without at least giving it a try. So I've definitely given fern a try and I definitely disliked it. So <laughs> fern. <laughs> oh, another person asked me what got you into plants. I did answer that, but this person does have a really great Instagram. So I'm gonna put her little question here and you can check her out if you want. Alana, my best friend asks me, how are you so beautiful? You're cute, I love you. Lindsay asks, when did you start getting passionate about plants? I would say that's been a lifelong thing, but over the past two or three years, it's kind of blossomed into this entire jungle, basically. Okay, and then I got a couple of questions on YouTube that I'm gonna answer, and then we will wrap up this little Q&A. What made you want to join the YouTube community and make videos? So that's a great question. I'm super happy to talk about YouTube a little bit while I'm making this video. Basically, I've always been really into making like silly for fun videos, um, mostly about like trips that I've taken and stuff. I'm not anywhere near a professional or educated video editor. I just kind of, you know, do it for fun. And I've always been really into YouTube and kind of wanted to be part of YouTube, but wasn't really sure what to do and how that would go. So I eventually realized that my plants would be a great place to start. And I've really, really been liking it. I genuinely get so excited to make videos and post them and share them with you guys. It is so much fun for me. It's been a wonderful outlet and I'm just so happy to be making videos and sharing them. And I want to say thank you also for everyone who's been supporting me because this channel has been growing a lot faster than I, you know, anticipated or really expected. I feel like, you know, I'm not huge or anything, but I was like nervous to hit a hundred subs and I reached, you know, over a thousand in three months. So thank you guys so much and it's been really rewarding so far and I can't wait to see where we go. How to on a moss pole. The moss poles that I use are trash and I really don't like the method that I'm using right now. Next summer, I actually want to try a couple different methods and maybe even try like a store-bought one and probably do like a comparison video. Probably not gonna post about how I make my current moss poles only because I feel like it's not gonna be good and it's not going to be really helpful to anyone so i'm gonna take that question and put a pin in it until next summer anna asks what plant is on the top of your wish list probably philodendron coast them but i have a lot of syngoniums that i'm just itching to buy <laughs> I don't know if you've talked about this already, but I've been trying to get into different ways of propagating. So if you're into sphagnum moss or LECA balls, can you talk about that? Um, so I don't do LECA. I've never tried LECA. 
uh, and intimidates me quite a bit. If you're interested in Lekka, this is not the channel for you. But Spag, on the other hand, I have been trying a lot more. It's more of like a newer way for me to propagate recently. I used to be really, really into water and that was the only way that I propagated. Basically, in short, my advice is to not just go with spag, but instead make a closed container with spag because that extra humidity is going to be super helpful in creating roots faster. And my last question is from Dea herself. What inspires you to create and what's your favorite plant memory? I think that like what inspires me to create is that I have always been a creative person, I think. So I used to dance and then once I lost that, I kind of just didn't know what to do. And now that I have video editing, that's kind of like my new challenge to take on. I think that's what motivates me. And then the rest of the inspiration comes from the plants themselves. And then my favorite plants memory, oh gosh. I remember we went plant shopping for my birthday with my mom and my sister and that was a really great plant memory. My mom bought me my Hoya Cornosa Compacta and I really love that plant and just remember my birthday when I look at it and my mom. And also when my boyfriend surprised me with my giant peace lily, he knew I wanted a peace lily really bad and then he surprised me with one and that was also birthday related. Okay, so I answered everybody's questions. Thank you everyone for sending me them. I was actually nervous to ask for questions because I wasn't sure if anyone would send me any, but you guys did, so thank you for coming through. I really appreciate you guys watching my video and hanging out with me on Soothing Sunday slash Plantatober. That's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye. Thank you.